One of the most immediate, uh, one of the most meaningful bet timing tells is the uh, immediate call. This is also commonly called the snap call. I'm sure you've heard it called that. Uh, other types of bet timing tells can be faked. Uh, for example, somebody you can purposely decide, decide to take a long time to call someone or a long time to bet. Uh, but the nice thing about a, an immediate call, the snap call, the nice thing is that the person's not faking it. Like they didn't have, they made up their mind super quickly. They didn't put much conscious thought into it, and that's why immediate calls are so much more, uh, so much more meaningful. So what does it mean? Uh, yeah, it's under less conscious control than other bet timing behaviors. Like I just said, it's it's less consciously controlled, so it's more meaningful. So what do they mean? Uh, what, you know, the main thing it means is that a player, when they make an immediate call, they've ruled out a raise almost immediately. So what does this tell you? Um, yeah, it, mean, it means that, uh, well, for one thing, players with strong hands usually want to consider the best way to play the hand. Um, players with strong hands are very concerned with getting value. Uh, they want to do the right thing because you don't get that many strong hands. So uh, when you get a strong hand, a players, players are often very focused on how to play it, right? Whereas uh, players with very weak hands have to consider folding or bluffing. Uh, so that's the opposite end. You know, if a player calls immediately, they've obviously ruled out uh, ruled out bluffing or folding immediately. So, and, th and this makes you uh, makes us very sure, for the most part, that most immediate calls are going to be medium strength hands or draws. Uh, they're right in that middle strength range where you know it's not strong enough to raise, but it's worth an obvious call. So let's watch a few a uh, few examples of this now. Port with a pair of jacks crushing the pocket nines so of Port. Melvin. This is Melvin. Nines. We're raising. He's going to raise. He them. raises with his oh, jack. I don't know that. Port puts together twelve thousand. Twelve thousand one. Call. Melvin calls. So he makes a quick call there. And this is how you see a lot of immediate calls show up. Uh, you know. The, and immediate calls are much more likely to be present, like on the flop and the turn before the flop or before the pod gets really big, usually, because play, the larger the pod gets, the more incentive they have to uh, really think things through. But you'll see a lot of immediate calls like this, where a guy with you know second pair uh, or a slight under pair to the to the top pair calls a better raise, you know, super quickly. They they know they're not folding. They know it'd be bad to fold to give up so easy, or so they think. Uh, so they just make a quick snap call, you know, to see, see what happens on the turn. And a lot of times there's a little bit of defensiveness to this, too, because they're basically trying to say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm not giving up that easy. You know, I'm going to show you that I'm calling quickly because I'm not scared. So they want to, you know, try to show some confidence, too. That's a little bit of it, too. Flop is Trey 10. Another flop. example. It's kind of a pair. similar situation. I never flop two pair when I have bad signs. 12. 12. <laughs> Daniel bets 1,200. The Ambrosia thinks his nines are good. He calls. Very similar example to the last one. The Granu bets and the guy calls with nines on a 10 high board and he does it very quickly. Just very similar example and that's how you see a lot of these. Oh, another interesting thing too is uh, a lot of times you can rule out uh, really strong draws on these, depending on the board texture, you can rule out very strong draws because uh, think about it like this. If D'Ambrosia had, uh, let's say he had ace king of hearts, right, for the nut flush draw with the two other cards, um, he would at least consider raising in a spot because it's such a strong flop for him, right? Uh, so the fact that he just snap calls there is, is also very meaningful in letting us rule out really strong draws. Uh, now it doesn't, you know, he could, he could still have a draw like, uh, you know, what if he had like seven eight of hearts? Uh, it wouldn't rule that out. Um, it makes it still makes it less likely. But the main point is that we can feel comfortable ruling out super strong draws as well, because a lot of those draws on the flop at least have really strong equity. You know, and some most people are going to think for a little bit before uh, just immediately immediately calling. Uh, and this is very helpful to me in, in my game when I play. I feel comfortable uh, ruling out draws from people when they immediately call my bet on the flop. Um, 
at least with a lot of a lot of the stronger draws. So if I can rule out a lot of the stronger draws, I can also it also makes it less likely overall that they're calling with a draw, and this allows me to bet more value bet more hands later in the hand on the on the turn or, or maybe on the river if I feel like it be, it's become very unlikely that they were you know calling with a draw. It's less likely that they're calling with a draw. King Deuce. This is a hand where, uh, well, I'll just let it play. This from the WSOP. Jack, Calmar's bigger ace still leads. That's Calmar on the right. And he checks it. Two million. Jerry taking a shot at the pot. Cool. And a very confident call from Calmar. Yep. So Calmar makes a very confident call, you know, but like with a lot of behavior. It's not very confident, really. It's you know he, he feels like he's in a good spot, but if he really had a strong hand, chances are he would think about the situation a little bit more. If he if he flopped a set, for example, or uh, you know a really strong draw, uh, chances are he would think for a little bit before deciding what to do. Flush draw. Here's an example from a cash game, uh, high stakes poker. We're gonna watch Jamie Gold call with a uh, weak draw here immediately. Okay, that's 15,000. Why not? He's got ace high. So that was an example where uh, Jamie Gold was calling immediately with a four high uh, flush draw. Um, again, you know, if he had a, a stronger flush draw, chances are he would uh, consider raising. But this was just a case where he knows he's not going to raise with such a small flush draw. Uh, so he just tosses it in immediately. Okay, this next one. All the ones we've looked at so far have been flop uh, calls and bets. So we're going to look at one on the turn now. It's from the WSOP. It's a king that will keep Carlson ahead. Carlson's on the right. Mueller doesn't see any reason to slow down. Mueller has chips, and he puts in 2,175. Carlson. He's going to push the action and raise to 5,600. Well, now there's a reason for Greg to slow down. Not much. He does make the quick call. So, you know, it makes more sense the, the, the farther along in a hand you get uh, and the bigger the pot and the bets get, uh, the more strength you need to immediately call like that, right? So, uh, considering that this is a raise on the turn, uh, Mueller has right about this hand range we'd expect from an immediate call in that spot. Because, uh, you know, if he had a hand like ace-king, he would probably think more about, you know, uh, you know what's beating me. Um, and think more about the chances that he has to fold, or if he had if, if he had a hand like jacks or queens, you know, he'd probably think a little bit more about whether he's beat. Um, if he had a flush draw, you know, chances are he might think a little bit about maybe shoving it in or or, or whatever. Uh, but the fact that he's got two pair is is uh, is right around the hand range I would expect a player to have on this board with a immediate call, you know. Um, it's good, but it's not great, in other words. It's stronger than one pair, but, you know, less strong than, than trips. So, you know, the, the size of the bets and the, the hand, uh, the texture is, is always something to keep in mind. Now here, uh, this is just, this next example is showing you that, you know, Experienced players are aware of this pattern, so this is an example from the WSOP where Havad Khan uh, talked about a, a purposeful quick call he made. I had King 8 and uh, John Calmer looped in. He's been a pretty aggressive. So when he limps in, I think he's going to call if I raise, but I only have King 8, and you know, I really don't want to keep putting more chips. So comes Ace 10 8, he checks, I check. Turn card now is another 8, and what a card for Havad Trip 8! Ooh. Now I super fast call to make it look like I'm on draw. The quick call usually implies weakness. So this uh, this is just showing you know when when players are more experienced, you can't trust their behavior as much. If you know a player is experienced, uh, you just can't you can't trust them as much. They're going to switch up the patterns that you know. Um, they're going to they're going to try to confuse you, right? So that's just a, a warning there that you have to watch out for players who know what patterns mean. So. You know, there's a few things that are factors when it comes to immediate calls that you should keep in mind. Uh, how much time has passed in the round is one major factor. You know, uh, 
immediate calls are, are only useful if there hasn't been much time that's passed. Uh, an example of this, you know, where an immediate call wouldn't mean as much as if, uh, as if uh, somebody had bet in a multi-way pot and then there was many people that thought about the call for a long time and then it finally reached the guy at the end who was last to act and he made a quick call. But he had so much time to think about whether he was going to call or not. Uh, so the length of time a player has had to think is a, is a big factor, so you have to factor that in. Uh, it becomes more, immediate calls become more useful the less time a player has had to think. Uh, like I was saying, board texture is uh, always uh, a factor, you know, you have to think about what, what hand range would this player think about, um, be more likely to think about, you know, on some board textures, some hands like uh, strong flush draws or, you know, players are going to think about betting or raising, you know, uh, more often than, than really dry boards. Uh, so that's something you have to take into account. The aggression level of the better can be a factor because if, some, if somebody is known to be really aggressive, uh, then players are going to call them lighter, they're going to call them more frequently, they're going to call them quickly. Um, so that can be a factor too. And it'll, it'll still tend to mean, you know, medium strength or hands or weakness, but it can be a factor in making those, you know, making those uh, immediate calls more, uh, more, fr more uh, common. And also the caller's usual tendencies. Some players act quickly all the time. So you, as with all tells, you have to think about player-specific correlation. Is this player constantly calling all the time? Then it's not going to mean as much, right? If they're really quick, you know, maybe an online player that's really used to acting quickly. Now just a word of advice, you know, when it comes to bed timing overall, you want to just stay balanced in your behavior, you know. Uh, so what this means for immediate calls is you just want to wait a few seconds when you're in a um, when you're in a situation, um, even if it seems super obvious to you. Just wait a couple seconds so that way you're not going to have those immediate calls and people aren't going to be able to make those reads on you as easily.